Believe it or don't, the earliest commercial VR device was the Nintendo Virtual Boy. The Virtual Boy was a commercial flop as it was uncomfortable, caused nausea, and users found Gunter, the Virtual Boy that comprised the Virtual Boy's only software, rude and a bit racist. The Virtual Boy was originally designed to be head mounted, however this was changed partway through development after playtesters complained about the weight. Gunpei Yokoi, one of the developers of the Virtual Boy, stated, Most of us devs assumed the 300 pound weight would be fine for most people. It turns out we're just much more jacked than the nerds that use this crap. Nintendo eventually discontinued and recalled the Virtual Boy after the ninth attempt at murdering Gunter, which also happened to be the first successful attempt. VR technology was adapted for military purposes in the early 2000s. VR was used as a torture device where the victim would be put into stressful, frightening, or very awkward situations. Such as, brunch with your two friends who will inevitably be divorced but have yet to admit that their marriage was a failure from the start. Despite the seeming success, ethical concerns and run-ins with one too many lifelong third wheels made the military ban the use of VR as a torture device. In an effort to not waste the money that was already invested on the project, the military attempted to modify their VR tech into a recreational device. However, this was also deemed a failure, and they discovered that brunch with your great uncle was the torture scenario that they should have been using all along. In the past few years, several companies have began trying to create a resurgence in VR and have been attempting to make it actually pleasant to use. The Ocular Rip and the HPV Clive are among these. The Cultist Rift is using revolutionary black magic to create the most realistic experience it can. The technology works by having Beelzebub teleport the user's eyes to his Dreamatorium in the administrative tenth circle of hell. Here the Dreamatorium demons consume the electricity pumped into the octopus shift along with the dreams of the users to create games. The Anubis Lift has seen some backlash in regards to the dreams of the users being consumed. But after it was revealed that it was in a little red clause in the terms of use, the movement has lost traction. While this technology does create some very realistic experiences, having your eyes separated from your body tends to cause nausea, so very few can stand to use the Agamon Mift for extended periods of time. The HTML Dive uses more traditional screen technology, but does feature quite impressive motion tracking. This motion tracking is achieved by a series of many high resolution cameras that track your actions while using the device and during your everyday life. This creates a more direct feeling of control to the game you're playing as well as making the targeted ads very accurate. Using the ABC Live, users can control a spaceship as if it were really in front of them and be reminded when they are out of Mountain Dew. To the dismay of many users, these cameras require quite a large clear space to be used for gaming and require important documents to be in clear view. It's not uncommon to not have enough space unless the user happens to be quite wealthy, even more wealthy than is required to buy the device in the first place. Hey, it's me. Thanks for watching this. Uh, I think it turned out pretty good. That doesn't really mean much for the actual quality of it though, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, you can go ahead and hit all the... click all the buttons under the video like subscribe and all that jazz just go click every single one like I don't, I don't know what buttons there are there's like share there's probably uh there's probably a report button i guess don't put push that one that'd probably be bad for me don't report this video i don't think i did anything bad in it but go push the other ones because i'm uh starved for attention anyway see ya by the way i was the one who killed gunter